about Sterling mics? I, I've recently been introduced to Sterling microphones. Uh, I've experimented with them. I'm working on a new project now, which is a tribute to pioneering blues piano players. In working on this record, I've begun to use the Sterling microphones. We started using the uh, ST55s. What, what, what I found is that uh, in, in the conjunction with the other microphones, they seem to add a certain beefiness, a certain uh, power and punch. The piano is probably the most difficult instrument that you can record because of the range of dynamics. You know, you, you're going from, uh, you have 88 keys on the thing, you're going from incredibly low frequencies to incredibly high, and they're mixing together as you're playing. There's this just incredible world of a uh, universe of uh, notes and harmonics uh, floating around there, and it's very difficult to capture that. I think the Sterling's do that very well. Uh, I've recently come to use the uh, ST69s. Uh, they have a little more flexibility and they're switchable from cardioid to omni and so forth. Uh, the diaphragms pick up the dynamics of the piano very, very well uh, and express that broad spectrum of sound very clearly. Uh, and I like to say that it's almost like your, your head is inside the piano when you're listening to a recording, uh, having used the Sterling mics, they're, they're wonderful. Mick Jagger has complimented you on your song arrangement. Got any advice on song structure? You know, my work with the Stones, one of the most fascinating things to me has been how we will bash a song to death. You know, Keith will have some riff or have some chorus. Uh, one thing that comes to mind to me was, uh, you got me rocking now, which is a pretty good rock anthem song. Uh, he, uh, that's all he had. He had, hey, hey, you got me rocking now. Hey, hey, that's all he had. And man, we bashed that thing and we tried this and we tried that. And we, and, and if he finally, you know, by the time Mick really found his footing on the tune and came up with, with, uh, the verses and there you, you had this, this piece of work that, that really has stood the test of time. Uh, but it didn't just fall out of the sky. It, it took some bashing, some trying, and some experimentation to get there. Over your career, can you think of a few magic moments where everything just seemed to fall into place? One that comes to mind early on in, in my career with the Allman Brothers Band was the song Jessica. You know, I had just come into the band. I was 20 years old at the time. I was a piano player that <clears throat> was coming in behind a very famous guitar player, Dwayne Allman, that was really the band leader and uh, was just such an enigmatic, wonderful presence and, and, and you know, uh, fortunately being, not being a guitar player helped me because I, I didn't have to try to replace Dwayne Allman. Nobody could have replaced Dwayne Allman. But uh, it was nevertheless a position of some pressure. Uh, I tried very hard not to think about the pressure and just to play. That's always been my focus is just to play. Well, anyway, Dickie Betts, had written this song called Jessica. He had been listening to Django Reinhardt records and he was watching his young daughter at play. She was a toddler, maybe two years old. And he came up with this, uh, with this song. And so we, you know, we began to look at it and to organize it and to arrange it. And uh, fortunately for me, it lent itself uh, for a piano feature. It was magical to work with the band on the arrangement. Uh, the, the outcome seemed magical to me. Uh, it was a nice solo spot for me, a nice piano solo, and it seems to have stood the test of time. Another that uh, certainly comes to mind uh, that was very magical for me was uh, working with Eric Clapton on the Unplugged record. Eric came to me and he said, uh, do you want to do this on your own or do, do you want to look for another keyboard player to join in? I thought about it a while, and I said, you know, I'd like to have it to myself for a while, if you don't mind. He was happy with that. So the unplugged record was the first thing we did in that setting. And I have to admit, I was a little bit like a coiled up spring, man, because, you know, I hadn't had much solo space uh, prior to that time. And I was sort of let out of the box and released, and I could, I could step up to the plate a little bit. And that was the first experience. And it was a live program, live show, no tricks, no overdubs, no second chances, uh, all acoustic. But just the entire concert 
for me was a very, very special moment in time. Stranded on a desert island, what albums do you have? Keith Jarrett, probably the White Album for me. Beggar's Banquet might be in there. There could probably be a Floyd Kramer record. Bill Evans, I would have to have Leon Russell in there. Maybe a little Richard. I think I'd carry Elton John along there too, so. How, how many records do I get? Do, do I get 10, 12, 100? I don't know. Hi guys, Chuck Lavelle here. Uh, enjoying using my Sterling ST69 microphones that I've just received and had a lot of fun experimenting with. Um, you know, we've tried a few different configurations with these mics. This is one sort of traditional uh, configuration using them at a 45 degree angle. Cardioid pattern is going to capture uh, just the, the diaphragm that's facing down towards the string here. And in this configuration, you know, you're going to get, and you, you might uh, experiment with the exact placement of this, but keeping the mics uh, approximately, what would that be, six to eight inches apart and a 45 degree angle. And it's really a matter of experimenting with each different piano. Uh, all pianos are different. And uh, finding the exact sweet spots where, where you get the full stereo perspective and also, um, you know, just, just the, the coloration that we're looking for in sound. Another way that we use the mics uh, from time to time is facing each other and without actually doing this we would close them all the way where they're actually almost touching and then again with the cardioid pattern and uh, face straight down. But you know we've had a lot of fun experimenting with various different uh, uh, techniques. One of the things that I've uh, found that's interesting is to actually take a microphone and place it underneath the piano, you can find a sweet spot there and use that in addition to what you're using up here in the stereo perspective. And sometimes that gives it uh, well, a little bit more beefier sound.